Hi and good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Brown Brady. I work in New York, the Mount Sinai um, School of Medicine, and uh, I specialize in cardiac surgery, particularly um, pulmonary embolism surgery and minimally invasive surgery. A lot of uh, ways of tackling mitral valve repair. Mitral valve disease is a common problem, um, which happens particularly in elderly patients, but also in young patients. Some people are born with a dysfunctional valve. Some people develop these dysfunctional valves over a period of time. The Barlow's is one type of disease where you have a lot of leaflet tissue. And so it's sometimes quite confusing to decide what needs to be done. Again, what we are going to try to do is leave a simple reproducible technique of how to do this using one of the newer rings that's on the market at this point in time. Again, the advantage of this ring is it makes the repair very simple. There is a lot of push to, to make things less and less invasive. Aortic valve replacement is a relatively simple valve to take care of. It's normally done through a full stenotomy, which means that the entire breastbone is open. The technique of doing it through a much smaller incision has been around for a while, but it's still not widely adapted. And again, we're trying to standardize and simplify, and hopefully we can impart that here. When we talk about minimally invasive cardiac surgery, and we talk about coronary bypass surgery, the minimally invasive, the best minimally invasive technique for coronary bypass surgery is what we call a mid-cab, which is a small incision in the anterior chest through which we take down the mammary artery and then sew it onto the heart. This allows for a lasting repair of the ischemic problem. And it's really the first attempt, it was the first attempt at minimally invasive coronary surgery and we would like to make sure that this is a lasting legacy that is again standardized and important. When we take down the internal mammary artery, usually we take down the associated vein and tissue surrounding that. This allows us to maintain the milieu of the uh, internal mammary artery. Unfortunately, what it does is it makes the mammary artery take down sometimes a little less defined because we're not looking at the mammary artery consistently. When we take it down in a skeletonized fashion, the flows through the mammary artery sometimes seem to be better. It also allows us to do more complex operations with the mammary artery and makes it simpler. Taking it down with the harmonic scalpel, which is a reusable system, um, makes it easier and in many ways safer and this is a technique that we would love to discuss with our colleagues here. Redo coronary bypass surgery has become unusual. Coronary bypass surgery has done well over the last 20 years. Redo coronary bypass surgery used to be very common before. The techniques therefore have advanced to the point that we don't have to go through the entire stenotomy, which is the entire breastbone again. If you're able to sneak in through a limited incision, patients don't get put through the gamut of the entire operation and therefore they do much better. The inferior mid-cab is a technique of taking one of the blood vessels in the belly and putting it on the heart. And that's a technique that uh, was pioneered uh, many years ago, has been successfully applied all over but has not been standardized. What I'm demonstrating is a standardized technique which I think is applicable for most people. Anomalous coronary vessels are actually a lot more common than we think. Uh, 0.2 to 0.3 percent of all people have anomalous coronary arteries. That is that the coronary artery which is supposed to come off a particular part of the aorta comes off the wrong part of the aorta. For most people it doesn't create much trouble but for some people it does. And what I'd like to impart is one, how do you recognize the people for whom this is a problem? Secondly, if you do recognize the problem, what are the appropriate steps to take? 
The steps that you can take in kids are different from the steps that you can take in adults. And what we're going to talk about is adult congenital heart surgery, which is an emerging field, and anomalous coronary arteries are part of that emerging field, and I'd love to see a much more standardized approach to it.